Sorry. All right, we're on the record in State versus George Kelly, CR 2023-026. This is the date and time set by the court for a hearing related to media requests to be present at a uh, possible, indeed a likely, visit um, by the jury to the alleged crime scene. And um, pursuant to Arizona Supreme Court rule, I think it's 122, I scheduled a hearing for today's date. I don't see any legal representatives from any of the media, but we do have media requests from KVOA, KOLD, KGUN 9 television stations. Those are all local stations, I believe, in Tucson, as well as the Arizona Daily Star, the Epic Times, the New York Review of Books, Univision Network, NBC Telemundo, and AZPM, which I believe is Arizona Public Media. Um, I should note for the presence of Ms. Hunley for the state, Ms. Larkin and the defendant are present as well. And Mr. Jetty is joining by the Zoom call. Um, so uh, in the event that, um, that we are able to achieve this visitation, and, and I hope we are, and we're certainly in the planning stages for it, and ex the expectation is we will be able to do it. But um, as I've said before, the process that will occur at this visitation will be as follows. It will go down, the jurors will be separately transported to the location of the Kelly's Ranch. Um, I'll be there, counsel will be there, we'll have a clerk there, the court reporter there, the bailiff there, um, just to be present. The parties will have agreed on locations that the jurors are to visit. Um, I don't know how, about counsel, how many cones or situation, points of interest, uh, do we anticipate them seeing? I think we had 11 or 12 or something along those lines. All right. And that's on the property itself and then a possible visit to the border area as well, which is a separate. Okay. So the, the, uh, the jurors will separately have a, have a key. They'll have locations 1 through 12, and they will be walked from locations 1, 2, 3, and so forth all the way through 12. Uh, probably by the bailiff and the sheriff's deputy. The attorneys, myself, the parties, uh, the defendant, will be separate. We will not walk with the, uh, with the jurors. The jurors are just going to walk on their own, be taken from point to point to point. Uh, the jurors will not be allowed to talk. They'll not be allowed to ask questions. The lawyers will not be able to communicate with the jurors, nor will the court. They're just going to move from point of interest to point of interest, until they're finished, and then they're going to get on the van and come, come back to the court. Um, videotaping of the jurors is prohibited um, uh, under the law that we operate under. Um, so that's off the table. Any media that we're allowed to go, if the court were to allow it, you know, would not be able to go onto the property and follow the jurors and see what they're seeing or to actually independently go see what they're seeing. They're not going to be able to videotape or take photographs because the jurors' identities must be kept private. Um, and um, moreover, this is all private property. You know, it's, it's the Kelly's Ranch, and I think that whole property down there, if I'm not mistaken, it's all, these are all private residents. It's all private property in Keno Springs. So the court doesn't even have any authority to allow uh, the, uh, the media, to order that the media be allowed on private property. It is a court proceeding, but it's not a public courthouse the way we are here. So, I mean, I totally understand what the media's interest in this, and I, you know, we've been very accommodating. I, in terms of the requests that the media has made for the courtroom, I've authorized everything to include able to bring laptops in the courtroom, a recording device, recording devices that produce rough transcripts, keyboards, everything that's been requested in the courtroom. The use in the courtroom by the media has been reasonable, and I think I've been very liberal, pro probably more liberal than most judges are under the circumstances, but I've allowed it all because I recognize the public's very strong interest uh, in this case and the importance that we get information out there and transparency. Everything's been on the record here. I mean, I understand the public's interest and very sympathetic to it, but the value to the media of going out there, even if I were to able to allow it onto private property, which I don't think I can, but even if they were allowed to go out there, you know, they're not going to be able to videotape or photograph anything, and they're not going to be allowed to enter the property or follow the jurors. So whatever benefit there is to the media and therefore to the public interest is, is very marginal. 
these situations are um, visitation to the alleged scene of the crime uh, are really at the discretion of the trial judge. They're very unusual and very rare. I think uh, I'm going to authorize it in this particular case. There's so much involving the terrain and the location of the various points of interest, and the parties are in agreement. Indeed, the parties jointly initiated this request that, that I think it's important and valuable for the jury to go out there. So we're going to do it, but you compare that to the, the really marginal value of letting the media out there to see whatever they can see. Um, and you look at, when I look at the possible risks of having media out there and exposure of the jury and things going wrong, you know, I'm very concerned about that. These have to be very controlled situations. Um, if they're not tightly controlled, then, then we have an out-of-court experience that can cause us a problem. So I'm structuring this in a very controlled way. As I said, no talking, no contact between the lawyers and the jurors or the judge. Uh, and they're just going to walk, look, get on the van, and come home. So for all those reasons, I'm going to deny the requests. I'm sorry I have to do that. I really wish there was a way we could do that and, because I'm very much in favor of, uh, of media coverage in something of such a strong public interest. But balancing out all those factors, um, of course, going to deny the requests. Um, anything else council want to add? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Yes, sir. And I, by, are you Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. I do want to thank you. I'll, I will hear from you. I did. The court administrator did give me your email message and those options, and, and I did review that. But if you have something else you want to tell me. And I, I just wanted you to, uh, to raise the suggestion of just watching the van either leaving the court complex or arriving at the direct. Oh, leaving the court complex? Or arriving at the direct. Um, well, the problem, the, the, it's all private property out there. That's, that's the problem. You know, I'm not. I don't control what happens on private property. Um, if there's a way for us to kind of black out the windows of the van, you know, something like that. I understand you want some visual, right? Yeah, that, and and uh, we're not talking about access to the property itself. We're talking about just on the public road, here comes the van. That kind of thing. Down there? Yes, sir. Well, I don't think it is a public road. I think it's a, I think it's a private road, yeah. Right. It's, a, it's a long drive. I mean, I don't know, from start to from start to finish, what is it, 10 miles or so maybe? About 10 miles. And it's all, pri it's all private property down there. So, you know, uh, I don't have any authority to let anybody on there or to order that anybody can get on there. Um, if we could, like, black out the windows to the van or something and you want some visual video of them leaving or coming back to the courthouse, you know, that might be possible, you know. But really, it's so marginal, you know, the value that... It, it, it is a, it's something that would basically allow us to write a couple of sentences saying what the jury's up to and why. Um, and in terms of leaving the complex, we could just shoot at an angle where you don't really see the windows very well. It's going down the hill, something like that. All right. Well, if we can, if we, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Um, as long as we don't, we are able to structure it so that there is no visual of the jurors. And we might have to have somebody, if you have a camera person, well, first of all, I, I'd like there to be some kind of pooling arrangement, if possible, uh, for something like this. But if, if we're able to do it and kind of black out the windows or something so there's no risk of the jurors being seen, you know. Uh, I haven't coordinated our pool, but I'll talk to our person at the station who has. And mm -hmm. it's, in some ways, it's similar to the way we shoot in a school building, where you have school children who you're not supposed to show their faces. So you just shoot carefully, frame out, and what do you mean, frame it out? I don't, what does now, that sometimes mean? Sometimes you, you see school video and you go, why am I seeing all these sneakers? Well, since we're shooting the feet. Oh, okay. Uh, that kind of thing. Well, you may, and if we do that, you may have to, I might have to have somebody from the court just there looking over the camera person's shoulder just to make sure uh, no mistakes are made. Uh, so we'll get, we can get back to you on that. I, I, if I, I'm, I'm happy to try to accommodate that. And then we're talking about on the public property here at the courthouse, right? Yes, sir. You're welcome. I'm really, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely all in favor of it. You know, it's an, it's, there's a lot of interest in the case. It's important that public information get out there and people see directly as much as they can about what we're doing here because I think it builds confidence in the public in, in the legal system. And, and so uh, I, I try to be totally accommodating about what happens here in the court, courtroom as long as it's not disruptive, which it hasn't been. So and we'll, continue to be, we'll continue to do so. So 
uh, we will get back to you. I'll just see if we can, uh, if there's something we can do, you know, maybe just to shade those windows or uh, position it out for you. So, um, and again, it'd be helpful if there's, if we allow it, if there's just one camera and you pull it so that we don't have a cluster of media out there and have to monitor everybody at once. All right. Uh, what is that? Uh, News four. I don't know what what KO whatever it is. I don't know. You all right? Yeah, anything you want? You you've been you've been here the, the whole trial as well. I think with just about everything. Anything else? Uh, yeah, part of my slight tardiness here, but yeah, we, we were wanting to offer a full arrangement, no visuals of the jury whatsoever. Uh, I'm not sure if there was discussions before I came in about an issue with us being on the pro the private property. Well, well there is because it's private property. Yeah. Uh, but but anyway. What, what I would, I, I don't want anyone, you're not going to be allowed out on the property. All right, that's just off the table. It's private property, it's too risky. What we're talking about here uh, with this other channel, whatever there is, that um, can't keep you folks straight. <laughs> I don't, sorry. Uh, is, is a possible uh, photograph or video of the van that the jurors are in leaving the courthouse to go to the property? Yeah, I believe that would be it. All right. and as long as you could pull that together somehow so we don't, have a, we don't have to monitor three or four or five or six different media outlets and what they're photographing. Is that acceptable? Yeah, no, no issues on our end with, uh, with that arrangement that could be made. That gives you something. That gives you some kind of visual. And, and actually, the, the layout here with the steep hill would probably help make the windows less visible. Just get a video of it and down. Oh. All right. Well, we'll try and make, I, I think we'll be able to make that happen. Thanks. All right. Um, but I think we will position somebody with them just to look over your shoulder to make sure we're good. You know, we're two thirds of the way through this thing and everything's gone very smoothly and I don't want to take any unnecessary risks. Sound good to you? Uh, who else do we have out here? Do, yep. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. Okay, are you with the other station? The other station. All three of us. All three of us. Okay, very well. All right, and uh, thank you. Then does that sound good to you? Yes. All right. Um, we have a freelance New York review of books. I just talked about that with the court administrator. She brought that up to me again. The answer is yes. You can have a tra good news and bad news. Okay, good news is yes. The bad news is um, you're asking for a transcript of the of the jury selection in the courtroom, right? Yeah, just the entire day of March 21st because right. media weren't allowed. Here's the here's the problem that has not been transcribed, right, Denise? So it has not been transcribed. Things only get transcribed when a party or the court asks for it, or usually in the event of an appeal. Um, of some sort, then the parties can ask for it, and then they pay for it, or the court pays for it. Right now, it hasn't been transcribed, and so some, you would have to pay for it, and it would be pretty expensive. But you can talk to the court reporter about that. But if one of the parties or the court otherwise asks for that to be transcribed, and it's transcribed, then the parties of the court pay for that. And uh, then you can buy a copy of that, which is, isn't that a lot less expensive? Didn't you? So then you just pay for a copy. But that hasn't happened yet, and I don't know if it will happen. Okay, and that the recording, you can't have the, re it's okay. We talked about the recording also. You can't have that because we use that with our internal camera system here, and that does show the jurors. That, the, the transcript would be great. I have heard um, Ms. Lothorpe speaking to the guy from Epic Times, and I think that would be great. Um, I don't think they, they, they haven't. I don't want to ask them about that, but they haven't asked for that to be transcribed yet. I just checked with the court reporter. So she has not transcribed that. No, one, no one's requested that, right, Denise? All right, so no party, no one's requested that part of the proceeding, the jury selection, to be transcribed. So it hasn't been done. So they don't have it either. But if they do, and if it gets transcribed, you can pay for a copy and it's less expensive, or you'd have to pay for it yourself, and it's... How much does that run, Denise? More or less, a couple of grand. Um, no, it wouldn't be that much. It was only one full day. Um, less than a thousand. More or less. 
What copy? How much is it? 50 cents per page, Your Honor. 50 cents. 50 cents per page. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. So, uh, is it Mr. Smith? You want to be? Do you want? You want to designate a point of contact for the video thing of the jurors leaving? Want to do it through Mr. Smith, or? I just want one point of contact. So we don't have to call everybody. So far. All right, well, let's count on that happening. Uh, but um, so, um, council, I think right now uh, the, the best time to schedule this would be Thursday afternoon. Um, the state anticipated that its case would rest maybe Wednesday. That gives us into Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon gives us some time, you know, internally and you folks to get people out there to the to the ranch and set things up. And then we'd go take, we'd, after lunch, put the jurors on the van and go out there. And then we'd have Friday for, if you have, I think you were thinking of calling Detective Ainza after that as the last witness. We were planning on finishing with Detective Ainza on Wednesday, Your Honor. On Wednesday? Yes. Okay. Well, how would that work out uh, if we tentatively set it up for Thursday afternoon? I mean, we, I think he could be subject to recall if the jurors had any questions, and they might not. And then if the court would allow us to not close our case until after the jury view and then the after Detective Ainza answers any questions, the state ha is fine with that. Sure, I don't have any problem with that um, because they may have questions about what they saw. Uh, we could try for Thursday morning, but you know we just got to get things set up, and I think I think an afternoon just makes our life a little bit easier for everybody. Is that good for the for the Kelly family? Yes. And uh, Sunny. Yes. And the, <laughs> Sunny, all right. All right. Um, we got to get Sunny out of the way. Uh, all right. Uh, excuse, do you want Sunny there or not? Oh, I don't know. Is Sunny wants. Oh, is Sunny is Sunny an agreed point of interest? I mean. The only issue I see is that when we were there wasn't a problem, but Sonny was not in a pasture, and so that might be an issue. What well, do you want? I guess the question: Do you want Sonny to be wherever Sonny was alleged to be at the time of the alleged offense? Was he in a corral? He, he roams the whole 170 acres. I don't know where he'd be at any one point in time. But, I mean, during, during these, these events, wasn't he in the corral or something? No, he was out in the general pasture. I don't care one way or another if you folks want to agree. If you want anyway, to you, can, you, you folks can decide. I, I'm, okay. I'm fine with Sonny being there or not being there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, you ski, give, give the inch, you know, give the inch. <laughs> uh, first of all, I, I, think it, I think it is all private property out there. It yeah. is a private drive. And, uh, I was and, thinking on the public roadway, the main roadway that, that leads in to where it becomes private. I want to say it's Keno Springs Drive. Mm, well, I don't know. But I, I, I would, look, I'm trying to accommodate this. I really need to control this. I would, I would rather that not happen, I'm you know. That's uh, why I wanted to just raise it before. No, I appreciate you doing it. I appreciate you doing that. I, first of all, I think it is all private property, private road. I mean, the state highway 82 up is public, but well, Ms. Larkin, you can. May I speak? Uh, 82 comes and then Keno Springs Drive. It's 82 and you turn to the right. But and as you go out to, to the village and then when you turn at the village to, to access my ranch, from that point on, it's private road. But my concern would be that uh, if that was videoed, that would provide the public with a visual of how to get to my property, and I, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I, I don't like that. So no, I understand. I understand. All right. Well, thanks for that clarification. So apparently, some of it is public, and then it turns private at that point. But you know, uh, yeah, let's. let's Keep people off there. 
And we are going to have sheriff's deputies out there. And if, and if they're out there, uh, whether it's on that part of the public road or private road, I'm going to have them removed. Because right. I just don't want, I don't want anyone hiding out or camping out on that road. I mean, you, you're all reputable news organizations, you know, but you open the door to anything and anything can happen. We've really got to tightly control this. So the answer to that is I really prefer that not happen. Camp out up here, take a video of them leaving, you know, if you want to try and catch them when they're coming back, you know, but getting them leaving, you have some video, and that's about the best we can do. Okay? Thanks, Ron. All right, you're welcome. Good. All right, I'll give the file to the clerk, and uh, we'll be back. Anything else from council? Nothing? No, Your Honor. If, then we'll be back in session Tuesday at 830. Okay, we're adjourned for the day. We rise with the board.